Sorry. Oh, there we go. All right. So, yeah, after all of that, oh, man, God is so awesome. Um, well, I brought Isabel up, and we need to find a microphone for you. So I'm going to go grab it right here. Hang on just a second. So Isabel just made it back from youth camp, and she is going to share some of her experience. lots of people, but it really did bring a lot of movement with God, and like it, it was just such an eye-opener. Uh, he he did, did so many things, not just for me, but I'm sure for other people, but when I was there, he just showed me so many things. Uh, I've always had kind of a trouble of like seeing and imagining a future, and like being able to kind of dream a little, and uh, with this camp, it's called Apex. And it's kind of like that mountaintop experience. I didn't know what Apex meant before I went. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. But um, I really did experience that. And it was like, it was just so eye-opening. I, I just want to pursue a career in maybe ministry. And it, it just reopened that for me. It reopened yeah. that door and just met amazing people along the way. And I'm just, I feel so blessed to have experienced something so good. Awesome. So good. Thank you so much. You're so awesome. All right. Well, it's so amazing when we can just take time and spend in the presence of God. Unbelievable things can happen. And uh, so I just want to invite up because as you can hear, my voice is a little bit strained because I may have in the last couple of days gotten so exuberant <laughs> praising God that now my voice is a little bit strained. But to be honest with you, if that's why my voice is strained, uh, every week, that's right. If I'm up here struggling to talk every week, that's totally okay. So I want to invite um, Ryan Bun uh, Bundy to come up. Bandy, sorry, Ryan Bandy to come up. We just got back from the return, and so I just invited him to share what God put on his heart and what God did with him. Well, um, you know, a lot of us didn't know what to expect going in, and, uh, and that was a good thing. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my experience, but more so the events leading up. Um, I felt like God wanted me uh, to touch on some things, and then and then speak speak to the men in this house um leading up to the event let's just let's take a little trip back about a year ago um i've been in egypt for about a year and it's been rough <clears throat> yeah i've never i've never struggled with anxiety in my life i've always been like amazed how you know, people that struggle with that, you know, how that's a, a possibility. And about a year ago, uh, I lost my breath. I couldn't breathe. I was, uh, I couldn't lay on my stomach when I, when I slept. Um, every day I was just trying to make it to, you know, maybe be able to get three or four hours of sleep. And this went on for a year. I ended up in the emergency room, the hospital a couple times and, you know, almost got in an altercation with the doctor. I'm like, I'm not leaving here until you tell me there's something wrong with me because I've been battling this for so long and it's not going away. There's got to be a physical ailment. And, and she, she was getting frustrated with me, and she said, all I'm telling you is that all, after all the tests we've ran, we can't find anything wrong with you. And one of the pastors, that, this was back in Ohio, where my family's from, and I was spending the winter there this past winter. And uh, so my pastor, he's like there, he's like, man, he's like, I got to tell you, I think it's a spiritual battle. He's like, you're going through something, and you're in Egypt right now, and I can't tell you how long you're going to be there. Uh, but you gotta, you gotta praise God in the bad times because this is where you learn, this is where you build. Um, if it was easy all the time, you wouldn't learn, right? You'd just have fun and everything would be okay. Um, so the devil did everything he could to keep me out of the return. You know, he started talking in my ear, uh, 
all the brothers here that, that kept asking me, kept texting me, did you register yet? Registration's opening in a week. I was starting to get tired of it. I was getting mad at my buddy Troy, because he's like, hey, it's opening tomorrow. Did you register? Did you register? And then I just kept putting it off to kind of just get a jab in at him. Uh, yeah. And then like a couple days before, I was like, hey, man, I'm not going to be able to make it. I got to, you know, I got to work. And I could see him, you know, the little three dots on the iPhone. And he's like starting to get mad. And before he sent the text, he would probably regret. I was like, I'm just kidding, man. I'll be there. And uh, so, you know, I, I prayed about it. I knew what was happening. I knew it was the enemy. And uh, I got a phone call from a friend, a hunting partner of mine. And uh, she's like, hey, man, I'm going to the Brooks Range to do some sheep scouting. And that's right up my alley. That's my thing. And, and that was another tool that the devil was using. I, you know, who wants to go deal with their personal issues when you can just go to the Brook Range and camp and have fun, right? Build a fire and hang out. And, uh, but I was, I was carrying so many burdens just throughout my life. Uh, you know, the the one thing I think that men, we are really good at doing, we're, we're, you know, we're good at doing a lot of things is, is carrying the weight, you know, burdens. We carry the weight of our family, you know, to make sure that we love our, our, and protect our wives and our children. We carry the weight of our relationships with our parents. Uh, and sometimes it feels like we have the weight of the world on our shoulders. And, and the theme of the weekend was, you know, when, when the senior pastors were checking in on us through our journey was, you know, how you feel. And, uh, there were two words, and the two words were free, freedom, and, and I feel light. I feel like I'm walking on air. And so that word light just stuck with me, and as, as me and the guys were hanging out uh, last night, just talking, fellowshipping there at the, at the bunkhouse, he spoke a scripture to me, and I asked Jeff, I said, I can't, I can't recall what, where this is at. Can, you, can we, somebody look this up for me? And it's in uh, Matthew chapter 11, um, verse, starts verse 28, and uh, again, this is for anybody, but men especially. Um, he said, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Amen. And as soon as I read that, I just, you yeah, asking these guys, I like, this, this, emotional things, whole new, right? I was a Marine for eight years. You tuck it all in, you're a guy. But this weekend, I mean, it just, God just, he broke me. And I prayed that. I said, you know, give me a humble heart because I know I have a callous heart. I know going in, I'm not going to want to do the things I know I'm supposed to do. And I don't want to miss part of this experience. And he did that. And so if you've, some of you guys in here have heard of the return, maybe you weren't able to make it this time. This was just my encouragement to you. Um, to, to strongly consider uh, going through a life-changing event. I mean, we, we talked about how I'm 38. So 38 years of, of bondage, you know, the things that we put on ourselves as humans because we, you know, we don't always walk how we should was, was, was lifted in three days, you know? And that's phenomenal. Well, we got a quick video. Uh, I'm hoping it's queued up. And then I want to invite Jeff to come as that uh, video plays for another testimony. To North Pole, Alaska. This whole experience has been life changing. In three days, I learned more about myself than I did my entire life. It gave me a closer relationship to God. It helped me get out a lot of skeletons in my, that were in my closet. And as a combat veteran, I would recommend other veterans to join me in this journey to enlightenment. Okay, I'm done. Hi, my name's Ryan King. I go to Summit Church in North Pole, Alaska. Wanted to give uh, Jeff a chance to, as well, share what God has done in him. He came to me this morning. He asked me if I would speak on the experience of this weekend to you guys. And, and I was like, okay. You know, it's, I wasn't prepared, but that's okay. Because I want to be obedient and do what my father wants me to do. And I'll tell you something. This, this weekend, it's just exactly like Ryan was saying. It, 
It lifted burdens that were there for years and years and years, and it's amazing. When God gets you in the right environment and gets you around the right people, yeah. and uh, yeah. to the men out there, to be around men, godly men that understand what that means, it's amazing. And I'll tell you what, the brotherhood and the freedom and the fun we sat, we laughed, man, we talked, we, we shared. It was just fun. It was a really enjoyable time. Uh, it felt free. Um, uh, the moments that were difficult, I, I was like, I was amazed at these guys, at how much courage they have. And, uh, you know, I, I look at every one of these guys I went through this with, and I'm like, it's a true brotherhood. I'm like, man, I, I'm connected to these guys. And uh, it was, uh, I, I just want to, I couldn't encourage everyone here enough to please consider doing this. If you have the opportunity, you should jump all over it. And the, the senior, the pastors that came, we showed up. There was people from Seattle that came up here. There was people, my man, <laughs> my man came up. I haven't seen, he has been bugging me for two years to come to this thing. And, and I showed up and he doesn't live here. He showed, there he is right there. My man, Dan shows up and he's here. I'm like, man, Dan, he's like, I wouldn't miss this. Amen. And he's here. And that's my brother. You know, Felipe was, uh, hey, Jeff, I really think that you should come do this. And he's been telling me that for two years. And I'm like, okay, Felipe, maybe I should. And, but he just kept, you know, gently saying, Jeff, you know, I really think this would be good. And, and, uh, and man, I, I can't thank you guys enough. For, for pursuing me and, and encouraging me to do that. Because it, it truly is life-changing and, it, and it, uh, it's wonderful to be around godly men. And it's good to be at church, look around and see, I know that these men have been through what I've been through here. It's, it's awesome, man. Absolutely incredible. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Well, we were so encouraged uh, by the weekend or by the, the week, you know, just all that God was doing with the youth, with the men. And uh, as we press into God, there's, a, there's such a difference between us standing up here and talking about the great things of God and inviting you to things where you get to experience the great things of God. And, you know, it's just putting God into action. Because when we just have this distant experience of God and like we know he's good, we've seen him work. But man, when it comes alive to you, it's like nothing else will satisfy that experience with God. And you never want it to go away. You never want it to reduce. And so that's why I'm here. You know, it's why I come every week and share because the passion that I have for what God has for me when I didn't even deserve it. You know, I still don't deserve it. But that's the definition of grace. Undeserved favor. That's what God wants to pour out on us. That's what God wants us to encounter about him. Not because you're worthy, but because he's worthy. And so, such a powerful thing. Well, we have Pastor uh, David Ballard here from Seattle. He was the greatest uh, encouragement and support. He's always been there. Uh, we have even um, Joe DeMello, who is the brother of the founder of The Return. And, you know, the encouragement just that he came all the way from Texas to come up and be a part with us. And uh, just say, we believe in you, we believe in what God is doing through the ministry here, and we're behind that, and we want to be a support in any way that we can. But we've asked uh, Pastor David to come this morning and share with us. You, Many of you know him. He's been here with us many times, and we just love his heart, uh, love that God has connected us with him, and invite you to come and just share your heart this morning. So good. Thank you, man. Hey, man. How's everybody doing this morning? I should ask everybody to stand up and let's get biblical, but I don't think that would be appropriate. You know, I, I love this church um, just because God is in this place. You know, for us to, I was just listening to that video, but it wasn't just a great video, but to see everyone here get excited, literally, and laugh. Isn't it okay to laugh in church? 
you know, the world has painted this picture of we, we should be coming into church and celebrating everything that God's doing in you in our families, in our children. What I loved about coming up here and serving Pastor Phil and the team is, and so one of these guys asked, man, you've come a long way for this. I'm like, what won't you do to see God change men's lives? And it was an honor for me to come up and serve with your senior pastor and see these men. I was so proud of you, Ryan. He, he blessed me coming up here to see a guy who, who dedicated his life to the Lord in, in, in the scriptures that I read, one soul is worth a whole world and everything in it. What won't you do for that? And as, as Pastor Phil and all the other men gave their testimonies, healed men, heal men. Healed men, heal families. Healed men, heal children. And, and who are we to think that we don't pick up baggage as we go. See, men are called to be the priests of their homes. So if we're called to be priests of our homes, don't you think the enemy knows that? And if he can sway us from speaking life into our wife, our children, our destiny, our lineages. See, sometimes we're, we're as, as men and as people, we look at these 120 years that God's given us, but God is not in time. He's looking at, wow, look at Ryan. This is him, but look at his lineage. His lineage is going to be changed because of what we experienced in Alaska. So I want to encourage you men that are out there. And, and you know, it's, it's these services, when we, the men come back, they're full of excitement. Man, they're lighter, as you heard. They're just free men. And you see some of the wives going like this. Hey, you need to go. And so if you got an elbow to the side, I'm not looking at anybody, especially some of the men I know, Donnie, and that are getting elbowed even as I speak, my question to you is, what's stopping you? I have, there's, there's senior pastors that I deal with and, and all the time going, I'm just too busy. Really? Too busy for your family. Too busy for your congregation. See, I think the enemy allows us to be busy doing what we think is God's work. We forget whose work we're doing. You know, I love to serve. I love to, and, and my position is to serve and undergird and support. There's no greater honor for me to see what God's doing here in Alaska. I get energized so I can go back to my family, to our congregation, to our men. We are doing a return at the same time in Seattle. And there was another one going on in Texas, a Hispanic congregation, Pastor James was telling me, going on at the same time. At the same time, we have men being free all around the United States. God's doing something different. So here's my, here's my question for you, men. If you see anybody with these shirts on here, I encourage you to go see them after service. Now, you may ask the questions, and they may say this, all things will be old in time. We all laugh, the men who just gone through, because it's not a secret of what we went through. It's sacred. See, we know that the enemy, if we put some ideas like, like the other Ryan was saying, bearded Ryan, and what I called him, that, that, that you like, oh, I don't want to go like tell my feelings. It's not about that. You try to talk yourself out of it. Going scouting for sheep, and I'm like, well, that's, mm. is there another one coming up in a few months? No, I mean, but it's one of those things going, sign up. Sign up. Because your families are worth it. Where's your testimony? Okay. I just want to encourage you, get signed up. Talk to Pastor Phil. Talk to these guys. Because you're worth it. See, in, in the book of Jeremiah, it says that before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. Gave you all the gifts and talents that you'll ever need. You will reach people that Pastor Phil will not reach. These men up here are going to be in, God's going to place them in places that, man, I need that, that, 
that's my son needs to come back. So I'm going to place Ryan here. I'm going to place Jeff here. He's going to be playing basketball with some guys that need to hear my word. And now he's, he's free to, he's healthy. He's, and we tell the guys, listen, evangelize Christ and use words when needed. It's not about everything that we know and all the scriptures. And it's important to do that because then, then we know we're on the white track, but it's just who we are. Amen. All right. Now I'm going to get into the word today. I was, I was studying. Let's start get biblical now. Um, I was studying a few weeks ago and, and in Seattle area, our church, we go through walking through the scriptures on Wednesday night and being a children's pastor and leader for many, many years, I, I came across some scriptures that really kind of just shook me. Because there are some things, even serving God as long as I've served him, there, it just kind of, I, I focused on this person that I've, I've kind of skimmed over before. And I'm going to go through some scriptures this morning to challenge you to see if there's anything or any area in your life that God may be calling you to that you're like, eh, okay, we'll see. Because it's, some, God is always trying to speak to us. But a lot of times when we are in our prayer time, and I pray to God like, like he's my friend because he's my, he is my friend. The, the scriptures say that we need to pray always and petition, not just on Sunday mornings, Wednesdays, even in your quiet time. See, I, I speak to God when I'm driving in traffic. When someone pulls in front of me in traffic. I have, there was something, I picked up my daughter, she spent some time in Dallas uh, with, with her family, and, and this kind of spurred me to this thought that there's still some things in me that need to be worked out. We were leaving the airport, and I have a Jeep, and the top was down, and I, man, enjoying the Seattle weather. All of a sudden, this 18-wheeler pushes me off the road. The first reaction I had in myself was not, oh, praise Jesus, he must have had a rough day. No, as I'm going off the road, there was this frustration that led to the point where I'm like, get your phone out. We're going to take some pictures. Speeding up. And as I was speeding up to this 18-wheeler, God said, Is, are you going to let me into that? I'm like, well, I'm justified. Really? Okay. So let me, let me dive into the scripture and kind of show you what I meant, because this is where the Father was speaking to me, and I shared a little bit of it with our congregation last week when I ministered. But I'm going to, and if anybody heard in First Chronicles talk about Obed-Edom, Obed-Edom, his, just by his sure nature, you know, each one of us are called and identified by something. We also look in First Chronicles, the, the prayer of Jabez in chapter 3, we, we've all heard about that. But sometimes, unless we get into what the original scriptures mean about this, it actually comes to life anymore, even more. Jabez means born into pain. Wow. I have a, I have a name. It's called David. I know what it means. But you, can you imagine walking around with the name going, born out of pain? But see, we don't know that. All we hear is the, the, the prayer of Jabez. Expand my tent stakes, my territory. But if we get into it, it even, it's even more powerful because we realize that the scriptures say he was the most faithful of his brothers. Think about what he had to go through. The story picks up, and this is David. We all know the story. For time's sake, I'm not going to go into reading all the scriptures, but you can, I challenge you. To get into the scripture in 1 Chronicles chapter 5. What, what David's doing is bringing the Ark of the Covenant back. He's so happy. He, it says in scripture, say he gathers all of Israel to bring the Ark back. And then we know, wait, one of the guys touches it. it. He doesn't burn his hand. He falls dead. And we're like, what, bro? Then the next scripture says, David decided to knock on this gentleman's door. And I've skimmed by this so many times and never really got into it. He knocks on Odo Eden's door. 
And for me as a children's pastor, I'm very visual. Can you imagine King David knocking at your door? And, and for those who have technology, you sit there and go, can you imagine looking at your ringtone going, who is that at my front door? It wasn't just him. Can you imagine? The king saying, hey, um, can I leave this Ark of the Covenant with you? Hold on. It was a choice. But what does his name mean? One who serves the Lord the right way. So it wasn't by accident that King David knocks on his door. Actually, Edom, Obed-Edom means serving the servant of the Lord who serves in the right way. But his last name actually means blushes with face or one who blushes or red. One who's humble. One who's meek. So it wasn't by accident that King David knocks on this. Hey, there's a gentleman here who serves the Lord the right way, who's humble. So do you see how the scriptures come alive? It's not by accident. But there's certain things that happen that I want to get into this morning that I believe will relate to us. Because for me, when I was driving down that freeway and I got pushed off, there was a knock on my door. Hey, are you willing to, you willing to let me in on this? Well, I'm justified, God. No, I, I'm good. How many of us do that? Hey, I, I'm, I've been pastoring for a while. I, have, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm spirit-filled. I, but is there anything in you? Because when I was squeezed, something came out of me that I needed God in. And I had to repent. Not just to my daughter who saw this face in me like, mm -mm, not on my watch. I had to apologize saying, listen, listen, she's my youngest. I said, your dad shouldn't have acted that way. I may not have said anything. But the anger I had inside of me where I sped up a little over the speed limit and actually took pictures. There was an area in my life. So Oda Beatum opens the door. The Ark of the Covenant, which means the presence of God. So he, David knocked on the door. Odom answered and said, hey, can I leave this Ark here? Of course, we know the scripture says he, he said yes. But then it's interesting what happened after that. And I'm, I am going to read the scriptures because it's important for us to get into the original text because it does explain to us his motive, his emotions, and I believe sets an example for who we are. And it's then after the ark was left, the ark of the God remained with his family in his house for three months. And the Lord blessed his house and all that he had. Now, do you think Odom Edom's house was perfect? This is where we have to understand God's mercy and grace. I understand when I got frustrated, God's, God still loves me. But there's things that he's always trying to get us to refine ourselves. Kind of a little bit what these men have gone through the last three days. Showing us a little bit more about who we are. So it says that and all of his house was blessed. But there's certain things that he did. If you look in the original Hebrew text, what, what they said Odom Edom did, would, did was twice a day he would light a candle. There, he's, there wasn't darkness ever shed on the Ark of the Covenant. Twice a day he would light candles. It's kind of like living in Fairbanks this time of year. It doesn't get dark. I, I call, talked to my wife the other day. I said, how are you doing? I said, I'm tired. I said, I had not seen the sun go down since... Monday, and I was talking to Pastor Phil, said, I hadn't seen the sun go down since May. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Lord, pray for them. But the first point for this morning is the presence and the power of God changed his home life. Are you willing to do that? At the end of this service, I want us to, I challenge you to make a recommitment, to analyze 
your families, yourself, men, you. you. Because I would love to say when I repented to my daughter that 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 situation that happened, that that was instantly free. No, it was stuff that I had to work on. Because when I got home that evening, I was good. I prayed, da-da-da-da. But you know, the enemy is a liar. I was studying, actually, for, to minister this message and another one. I had the Word of God on my lap in my study chair, and I had my phone to my ear, calling and complaining about this driver who works for a large company, and I don't want to mention it, but they deliver things by Prime. And, and so I was literally, I was very frustrated. I was on the phone just frustrated and that still small voice said huh you're ministering the word of God and on your lap but you're you're on the phone frustrated mad I thought you let me in listen no conviction I have things I have to work on but I believe that Obed even started noticing a change in his life. He started noticing things because God's presence now resided in his house like never before. See, he was called, like we were all called, to serve God. But he had made a decision to open the door. But it just didn't stop with his house and his home being blessed, which is important. See, the blessing was in response to the presence of God into his life. See, without the power and presence of God in our lives, we try to live under our own power. How many of us do that every day? When we, don't we forget that there's a, our Abba Father looking down from heaven going, my son, my daughter, pray for my Holy Spirit to guide you today. Open that door. When, when I was raising my three wonderful girls, one thing that we would pray every evening, every morning, was the armor of God on them. Not that they ever took it off, but I was reminding them of what door we had opened, that they are going to be walking with him, that we are gonna live a blessed life, not perfect. Forget about this perfectionism. blessings of God. We have to trust him like never before. Sometimes even coming to church, of course, we're willing to come here and praise God. But as I was, I was blessed up here this morning, watching people come forth to lay it at the altar, to let God in every aspect of other houses. But if you read the scripture, that's not just what happened. The second point this morning, the presence of God changed Odeb Edom's priorities. See, he just spent three months in the presence of God, but then all of a sudden, David knocks on the door again and say, hey, it's time to go. Can you imagine? I'm ready to take the presence of God from your house. Hmm. But then there's three distinct things that he does that for us is so important if we truly have let God into our house, into our lives. And we can read this in Chronicles 15, 16. David started retreat, retrieving people to sing. Because anytime there was a their battle, they always started with praise and worship. That's why I loved our worship. Anytime we're about to enter in, anything, anytime we're going to a battle, because taking the ark out of Odebedum's house to go to a place that David was going to assemble, he was going out into the world. So he needed something. He needed singers. So it says that David started assembling singers, people that could sing, people unlike me, 
I can't sing. I can make a joyful noise. A lot of noise. It says this, 1 Chronicles 15, 16. And then David spoke to the leaders and the Levites, who owed him, he was a Levite, to appoint the brethren to sing, to accompany with instruments, stringed instruments, harps, cymbals, and to raise their voices with surrounding joy. Then the following men were chosen as their assistants. Lists a bunch of men. The second to last was Odebedum. I don't know if y'all remember gym class, or they called it gym then, it's PE. When you would divide teams up and say, okay, we need, and all the good people with had skills in hand-eye coordination, which I wasn't, they would get picked first. Then it got back to the end of the list. Oh, you got two people left? Oh, Odebeam has his hand up. Okay, we'll pick him. But see, why did he have his hand up? Because he's just been in God's presence for three months. But it doesn't stop there. Then David asked for doorkeepers. Then David looked around and said, we need some doorkeepers. We see this in chapter 15, 23. The same thing we see happening. Odomi is back there going, me, you just volunteered to sing. I know, I'm here. King David said, okay. You can now be a doorkeeper. But you're already served. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Then David asked in chapter 16, verse 4. David asked for people to minister before the ark. Before it reached its final place. The scripture says, And David appointed some Levites to serve in front of the Lord's ark, offering prayers and thanksgiving and praise to the Lord of Israel. God assigned a leader. Same thing. Listen, a bunch of men. Second to last. Oh, to beat them. You. See, I've, I've been honored to serve in churches for a long time. And for me, even when I started, I volunteered in five different areas of the church. People said, why are you doing that? because I want to be in his presence. I don't want anything in my life. This is an example of for showing us, listen, well, you may volunteer in the nursery, but are you willing to worship? See, the scripture says that we are his children. We, we should exist in his presence. For years and years, I skipped over how passionate Odom Enum was that there was going to be nothing that separated him from the presence of God. And so he actively pursued it. And then finally, David said, we need gatekeepers to minister before the ark regularly. In chapter 16, 37. Same thing happened. But here's the cool thing about it. All his priorities changed. The scriptures don't say what he did before that. But how can you do everything that he's called to do? Be volunteering for everything to be in God's presence. I don't know how your vocation could be the same. His, his calling, what he was identified to do has finally came to fruition. I'm called to serve God the right way. And this is painted in the example, but it doesn't just stop with him. Remember, it doesn't say that he said, hey, King David, me, 
No, it said he was in the back of the room. I'm paraphrasing. He was, but it said he raised his hand. He was a man that blushed. He was meek. He didn't speak up much. But what happened after that? My third point. The presence and the power of God changed Odin's family. Because in verse 26, verse 8, it says that not only did Odomedon become a gatekeeper for the Ark of the Covenant, a worshiper, but we read in chapter 26, verse 8, that 62 descendants followed in his footsteps. Changed his family. See, I can relate to that as some of these men that I spoke to at the return. I may be the first spiritual Christian that when the, when the knock came, I opened up. And that happened for me in August of 1989. Yes, I'm a little more seasoned than most. But my biggest desire was I, what Obed Edom's family was, I believe, on his heart for his family. I may have been the first, but I'm not the last. Because what I end up seeing, even in my own life, is my brother and I never really got along. He was always the... I was... We always played cops and robbers. I was always the robber. Him and I never got along until I got a phone call that he wasn't doing well, well physically. And that God put on my heart, said, you need to go pray for him. And that evening I flew from Seattle to Houston. And I said, Fred, how's, how's your relationship with our Lord and Savior? And I walked him through some healing of things that I had done in the past. And now he serves in his church, leading Bible studies, plugged into the Word of God. And even last week when I shared this message with our congregation, I was talking to my dad the next week, who's not a believer. But it was posted on Facebook. That's why it's so important, the social media. My dad said, uh, hey, I watched your meshes on Facebook. Good job. I was like, what? Who's that? Dad. 62 of his descendants were changed. Not only did he allow the power of God to work in his life, but he was an example to his family on how the presence of God changed our lives. Sometimes we can feel overwhelmed about our family members that don't serve Christ. Just curiosity, how many of y'all have family members that don't serve Christ? Just raise your hand. Keep them raised. Now I wanna, want you to look at that hand that's raised. Who's called? to change them. Oh. Are you qualified? No, you're not. Take that pressure off. There's only one person qualified. There's only one person that can clean his life up. There's only one person that clean these men's lives up. But it took them to be willing To say, yes, use me. It's that knock on the door going, yes, I, I desire to look past myself to my lineages. Think about this, 62. Huh. That's a big lineage, isn't it? How about you? How many are, are willing to open up that door? Remember, 
only on the power of the God, only under the power of God are we able to make strides in our families, in worship, in our relationships, in our lives. But it all relies on a response to that knock on the door. And I don't know where you are in your walk. You could be like me who's served God for a little bit of time or may have been just this week. The knock comes the same. I want to take a couple minutes this morning. I want you just, everybody, just to close your eyes for a second. And I want you to think about, is there areas of your life that when God comes knocking, say, hey, will you let me in? Are you going to close the door and say, no, not today, God. I'm too busy. Here's the thing about God. He's going to keep knocking. He's going to keep knocking. Not today. Okay. God says, I'll be back tomorrow. Because the scriptures say he'll never leave us nor forsaken us. That there is a point in time on our lives when that, that knock will come and then you will fully surrender your life. That it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter what's going on. That you'll be the one in the back of the room going, pick me, Lord. I don't care what it is. If you want me to sing, I can't sing, but I'll sing. If you want me to be the gatekeeper, if you want me, whatever it is, those were examples of us going living commitment in all areas, not just 90%. So I challenge you to, to think. Huh. Father, I ask you to look down upon your children. Father, this thank you that you've never left us or forsaken us. Father, that when you come knocking, your sons and daughters will, what? Me, Lord? Father, I believe that your sons and daughters are making a commitment to you this morning. that they desire that all areas of their life, not on Sunday mornings, not on Wednesdays, but 24-7, 365 days a year, that they're gonna commit themselves to be your sons and daughters, called to be your hands and feet. Father, use us, empower us, for it's not our will, Father, but yours. Father, this as you remove any blinders from their eyes that the enemy may cause them not to feel worthy of your presence. Father, I pray that even this evening that you'll give them spiritual dreams on how you see them. Because of their renewed commitment, Father, they've dedicated themselves to drawing closer to you. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. Now, there's one other thing else I want to do. Because sometimes we, we look at this life of 120 years and it's so, man, that's not long. But the last point was for our lineage. And y'all raised your hands. So I want to take some, take a few minutes, Pastor Phil, if that's okay, to pray for our family members. And see, remember, family is just not biological blood, but there is, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. See, I, I have an opportunity, remember, firstborn Christian to travel around the world to minister his good news. The gospel is good news, not condemnation, but joy in life. 
with everything going on in this world. Listen, God didn't push a pause button when COVID hit. He was in the midst of it. With the election, God didn't put a pause on it. He was still working in it. Why do we, as a body of Christ, have to go through the trials? I'll be honest, I don't know the answers. But I know who has the answers. And I know who is called for this season. We could have been born in any time, in any place. But you're planted here in Alaska. It's just not our biological lineage. But what about your brothers and sisters in Christ? I was in my first year of ministry, full-time ministry. I was in Dallas serving at a church that Pastor Phil knows of. And, and I was serving there and I was driving a stake in the ground for a children's event I was doing. And the police officer came up behind me and said, Mr. Ballard, what are you doing here? And immediately I looked back and I was like, oh. It was the same poli police officer who, um, how can I say, um, encouraged me to go the right path when I was in college. And um, yeah, enough said. And then he actually left and talked to Pastor Mike and said, hey, do you know who that guy is? I said, yeah, he's our children's director. He came back to me about a week later. And he said, if God can change you, he can change anyone. And here's the cool part. Because we're talking about being examples that that next Sunday, his whole family was in church. I got to minister to his kids. For him to allow me, who we had some issues back in the day, to minister his kids. And when the last time I was in Dallas two weeks ago, he, he saw I was there. He said, hey, if you're going to be here on Sunday, I'd like to have you over for dinner. He's my brother. Where the enemy tries to cause division and strife, God wants to bring unity. So if you, here's why I think it's important, not just because I'm an old children's pastor, I like to see hands up, but this is symbolic. If you wanna see your lineage changed, if you wanna see your surroundings changed, read these scriptures, get into the meaning of, of the names of the Bible, get into understanding that these are examples for us to walk out every day. If, if you want to see your family change, your friends change, your brothers, just raise your hand. And I want to pray. Father, I just ask you to look down upon your sons and daughters by the examples in your scripture where Odovinum's lineage, descendants were changed, Father. Your sons and daughters desire for to use them as your mouthpiece as an example of how to walk with you. Father, speak to them this evening, this afternoon. Give them visions and dreams. Father, encourage them like never before. Father, this ask that your presence falls upon them. Make all things new in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Don't you love God? You know, my, my last thing I want to encourage you in is I want you to pray for your pastors. And, I, and I, it is truly a, a call in a mind to support senior pastors and other leaders around the world. Because I can support them truly like Moses had somebody lifting their arms up to encourage them when the enemy beats them up. But we as a congregation daily 
pray. Oh, Father, I just ask you to be with Pastor Phil and Tiffany. You're speaking things into existence while you raise them up. They're, when their tent stakes get expanded, so do yours. See, the, the whole, in the 80s and 90s, like, oh, you're riding someone's coattails. Guess what? I'll ride Jesus' coattail every day of my life. I will follow in his anointing. The more we can reach and lift them up and encourage them, because the battle is, is real. We've all faced it. But the more we heard it from these men, the band of brothers. But what happens when the body of Christ comes together? See, that's one of my prayers. That I think the body of Christ, if we're going to see true change in this world, is going to be the churches coming together. Forgetting about where you put the baptismal and how you baptize. And that's not to under undermine things, but if we truly believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again, we don't have to agree in everything. But we can agree in the main thing. But it takes us. I believe the, the ministry of the Word of God, and this doesn't take away from our senior pastors, their job is to empower you. The real work of the ministry happens here. It happens with you. Oh no, I just sit there. And I'm just watching a movie. Oh no, you're part of the movie. You're the lead character of the, your movie. Because in that day, when you're in front of him, he's looking at your movie. And he's going to say, well done. My good and faithful servant. You're valued in everything you do. You're never too old and you're never too young. As long as you have his breath in your body, you have a purpose and a calling. Walk in it. Before I close, Pastor Tef and Phil, will you stand up? I want everybody just to raise their hand towards them. This has been a challenging year for, for churches all over the world. But they stayed faithful. They stood strong. Let's pray for them. Father, I just thank you for your set couple in this place. Father, this thank you that your spirit falls upon them like never before. That Pastor Phil and Tiffany walk boldly before you like never before, that they walk by your Holy Spirit, ministering your word. They are your faithful servants. Father, Father, honor them and bless them. Show them that they have a congregation that supports them. And Father, I just ask you to put a blinder around their eyes and ears from any lie of the enemy that's called them to feel less worthy of what you called them to. That you've planned them here, called them before they were born to minister your word, Father. Father, we support them and honor them and bless them. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. Let's give them a big round of applause. And I'm serious. I, I pray for my senior pastor and my friends because here's the cool thing the scriptures say that when we support them we receive their blessing see how it goes back and forth we don't do it for the blessing we do it because God's called us to but man I can't wait to see what God does here in Alaska I'm not going to say the North Pole because God's doing things. There's a brother that I was walking around and said, he's, he's moving to Arizona. Guess what? What he's learned here is going to go there. See how God does things? He's taking what Pastor Phil and Tiffany has administered, the word of God, and he's taking it to a new place. That's how God works.
Thank you all for me encouraging you, allowing me to encourage you this morning. You all are awesome. Let's give it up for Pastor Phil. Or maybe not Pastor Phil. Hi, Pastor Phil. How you doing? No. Wow, what a great word. Is God knocking on the door of your heart today? Thank you, Pastor David. So we're going to talk um, about giving. And if God is knocking on your heart about giving, there might be a reason. It's not to get something from you. It's get, to get something to you. So the ways to give are up on screen. You can text Summit AK77977. You can go online, summitak.org slash give or in person. There's um, an offering bucket on the back uh, wall. And I wanted to tell you a story really quickly. I know we're over, but, um, you know, it's okay to want to sow into a blessing. It's okay to want to sow into what God's doing. And if you study the parables, all through the parables, there was an expectation of increase. Okay, so when God said, he told the parable of the talents, what did he call the person who didn't invest? A wicked and lazy person. Ouch. Terrible. I'm just tired of God's people being lied to. So I was talking to someone about their seed. They had sowed a significant seed uh, of $1,000. And they felt bad about, like, oh, maybe I just gave to get, and, and maybe I should repent of that. Well, the important thing to recognize is that it's not the enemy telling you to give. If you feel to give into the boiler, and hey, y'all, it's the end of July. Winter is coming. <laughs> That's Jim's saying. Winter is coming. We want to get that done. And the money is coming in. This is a giving body. But if you wanted to partner with that, you know, I encourage you, now is the time I'm inviting you to partner with us in getting the boiler done. And the lobby floors, we're, it's coming in for that. God is faithful. And he's going to do it whether you participate or not. Do you want to be part of it? So the word says, give and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It's okay to expect a harvest. God's whole kingdom works. Seed, time, and harvest. Okay? You can expect a harvest. So do you want to know how that story ended? This person got $10,000 out of the blue. Okay. Is that a coincidence? The more Rob and I give, the more God explodes our business. You can't tell me that's not God because the numbers don't add up. It's all God. So, and side note, kicker of the feeding of the 5,000 plus, it didn't multiply in Jesus' hands. It multiplied in the disciples' hands as they gave it out. So let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for what you are doing in this house and beyond. And thank you for the privilege and opportunity. This is your house, God, and we honor you. We want to bless you, God. Help us steer up that spirit of revelation in us. What is our best gift? And give us that confidence, Lord. We know that you're going to give back more than we ever gave. And we are sowing into what you're doing. And that blessing will be uh, to the lineages beyond. God, we just thank you for what you're doing here. In Jesus' name, amen. How are we doing, family? All right. Just quick housekeeping notes. Just a reminder. It's August. Summit serves Alaska. There's going to be sign-ups and signs and things online. Get out. You will feel good helping somebody else. There's a blessing in the giving and the receiving. Amen? Amen. Wait, I could talk a lot about this. All I'm going to say is if you see somebody with this shirt, talk to them. There might be some things revealed at a later time, but let's see what it's about. I'm going to be in the back. I'm going to be in the lobby. Come see me and sign up. We're not sure when the next one is. We need the bodies. We need the numbers, but sign up now. If you don't have a life-changing experience, I'll buy you a root beer. I'm just, uh, I was thinking I'm going to follow up on a theme that I did last time that I was up here. You know, a little bit of anything is good. A whole lot of something's bad. If you go old school, baking a cake or, you know, a pinch of salt will make it sweeter. Will make the sugar sweeter. A handful of salt, not so much. 
So with the social media, it, there is great things about it. I connect and I actually like the food pictures because it gives me ideas. But who are you following on Facebook and Twitter and all of those things? Can I get that uh, picture up? Because I, I saw this and it was like, you know, hey, use this. Those people following you might not always be your fan. If you don't know Jesus truly I, in the congregation, online, if you're listening, you're hearing this, you're, and you're not sure there's a reason you're here, there's a reason you're tuned in, something's lacking, there's some hole that you just, hey, what, what's this about? Don't leave here today without talking to someone. We're going to have, again, those prayer warriors are going to be up here. Ask them. Let us pray over you and show you a path to get closer to Jesus. Again, we are all different struggles and trying to find our way. Seek out. Knock and I'll run towards you. If you take a step, 10 steps. I'm gonna ask you to rise as we get ready to close out in prayer and worship. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the many blessings you've already bestowed upon us. We thank you, thank you, thank you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. We just thank you for hearing the word today. Thank you for the word from Pastor David. And we ask that you please get him home safely. Godspeed and on the wings of angels. And we ask that you just allow us to take the words we heard here today and take them out into the world. Because there's the church. The church is out there, not these four walls. What you speak and how you act out there, that is the word. I invite you to stand as we get ready to go out in the world and pray. Pastor Pete, take us home. Nations bow, mountains shake. At the sound of just one name Over all Jesus reigns, I know Nations bow, mountains shake At the sound of just one name Have a great afternoon. We love you guys. See you next week.